Good morning and welcome to this week's webinar. My name is Tony Mayton and I am your presenter this morning. Today's topic is the new MyPNOTS modular safety relay. My colleagues, Alex Bryce, Jason Reed, and Dave Scott are standing by to answer any of your questions, which you can post using the option to the right of your screen. And we will endeavor to answer them during the course of this webinar. A recording of this presentation will be sent to you later today, and it will also be available for viewing on our GoToStage webinar channel. Further information can be found at mypeanuts.com or the pills.com website. And following this webinar, should you have an application you would like to discuss or would like a product demo, please contact your account manager and they will be happy to assist. So today we'll be looking at some of the features and benefits and where the MyP knots sits in our safety controller range, the ordering and assembly process, we have some example applications to go through and we will look at some of the modules in a bit more detail towards the tail end of the presentation. Lastly, I will show you how easy the online MyPNOTS creator tool is to use. Here we see a slide showing the positioning of the MyPNOTS modular safety relay within our control technology range sitting nicely between our single function safety relays and our software configurable PNOTS Multi-2 controllers. The MyPNOTS modular relay will monitor up to 16 safety functions with the addition of basic logic, but without the need for any software programming. And just to position it further, as an example, if you have an application that requires the use of a number of our single function safety relays, namely the PNOS X or Sigma range, then we would suggest that if you're using any more than say four single function relays, it becomes potentially more beneficial to look at using the MyPNOTS or the Multi-2 controllers. Just to note, the PNOTS Multi-2 models, MB0 and MB1, are software configurable with the MB1 able to cater for up to 96 safety functions. So the intended use is for monitoring between two and 16 safe input functions, such as emergency stop, safety gates, light curtains, type 3A and 3C two-handed controllers, and enabling switches, for example. It's ideal for small to medium sized applications of small to medium complexity. And I have some examples to show you a bit later on. Benefits wise, I have listed a few here, but as we go further into the presentation and onto looking at the MyPNOTS Creator tool, you would get a sense of the overall cost of ownership benefits the MyPNOTS gives you. My PNOX is an easy to operate and flexible modular safety relay that has internal combination logic. You only pay for what you need as each modular relay is individually assembled, set up and tested by PILTS, ready for installation in minutes straight out the box. And there is absolutely no software needed with the My PNOX modular relay system. So just to touch on some of the features, it is modular by design consisting of a head module together with up to a maximum of eight freely assigned expansion modules of which there are 12 variants. The input, output and logic selected determines the module type and plugin sequence and is defined automatically by the online MyPNOX creator tool. The expansion modules are connected to the head module via a bus connector, which supplies the 24 volt DC supply and also cuts out any wiring between modules. In the MyPNOTS Creator tool, the safety inputs can be figured as an AND or an OR link, and the output modules are selected either with a relay or semiconductor output and with 
or without time delay. So modules wise, we have a head module and a further 12 expansion modules consisting of four input modules, four input output modules, and four output modules. And I will go into a bit more detail on some of these a little bit later on. Apart from the head module, these are auto selected by the MyPNOTS creator tool, depending on your input and output requirements. If you choose to self-assemble without using the MyPNOTS creator, there is some simple guidance that needs to be followed. 24 volt DC is supplied by the head module, so this must be used. As well as the power, this also gives you the global emergency stop function. At least one additional module must be used and the last module must contain an output of some kind. If an input module follows an output module, a new zone is formed as a result. The start type, test pulses and the output delay time are configured using the rotary switches on the front. All you need is a screwdriver. There is no software to configure. Bus connectors must be used to connect the modules together. Moving on to the ordering process. The whole ordering process is quick and very straightforward, which I will show you on the next couple of slides. In simple terms, you create what you need, we assemble, set up, test and dispatch. You receive a MyPNOTS modular safety relay that's ready to plug and play in minutes. You, the customer, using the MyPNOTS creator tool, individually create your modular safety relay perfect for your application, selecting your required safety functions, logic, relay or semiconductor outputs, and any required time delay. It creates a type code number that's unique to that configuration, which can also be easily repeated for a repetitive application. You're able to run a logic simulation and produce a PDF report that contains information such as a wiring diagram, the rotary switch positions, and the bill of materials. And lastly, you can export the URL or copy and paste the type code number straight into your purchase order and forward it to your PILT supplier for processing. Once we receive your order, it is digitally placed on our system and the unique type code number is copied and sent to a dedicated PC stationed at our assembly area in Corby. This is done to rule out any human error, which is also the reason why we do not accept my peanuts orders verbally, as some of the type code numbers can be fairly long. The dedicated PC has a clever bit of software on it called Peanuts Smart Assembly Tool, which is connected via USB to a module assembly device. The software deciphers the type code number and displays an image of the required assembly, together with the setup and test procedure. Starting with numbers of modules, the module type and the assembly sequence, the assembler takes the first identified module and places it onto the assembly device and then selects the required parameters by screwdriver as indicated on the screen. When the image on the screen turns green, the module and the settings are correct and the assembler can then move on to the next module and so on. If an incorrect module is used, the image on the screen turns red and does not allow you to proceed. Once completed and tested, an identification label is attached and a report is printed, which is placed in the box together with the MyPNOTS module ready for dispatch. When delivered, you receive a product that's assembled, set up and tested, 
ready for installation in minutes. You will then be in receipt of a product that needs no assembly or testing. Wiring time is greatly reduced as the modules are interconnected via a bus. And as already mentioned, there is no software required, so no updates or license fees. And changes can be made with just a screwdriver. And with its low complexity, little expertise is required. And with features such as two safety input functions per input module, it offers a reduced footprint. So just to summarize before we look at some application examples, MyPNOX is an individual modular safety relay with basic logic which can be quickly created. There's fast and easy ordering process. It arrives pre-assembled, set up and tested by PILTS, ready for immediate installation. There is no software to program. MyPNOX is flexible, it's easy to change settings, modify, exchange and expand without dismantling the whole assembly or rewriting a software application. It's efficient to use and it saves time in areas such as creation, ordering, installation and wiring. It's plug and play in minutes straight out the box and offers a total cost of ownership solution. Okay, the first example is for a small application such as a sealing machine, CNC or packaging machine. We have between one and four emergency stops in series and two safe input functions such as a light curtain and safety gate. On the output side, we need to select a semiconductor output with no time delay. So using the MyPNOX creator, we select the required inputs, output, and the start times. The logic and the module sequence is generated automatically based on this selection, together with the hardware and the unique type code number. The second example is for a semi-automatic press. Here we have two emergency stops in series, a light curtain, a two-handed controller, and the safety gate. On the output side, we need to select a relay output with no time delay. As before, we select the required inputs, output, and the start types. The logic is produced as per the selected requirements, and again, it will generate the hardware requirement and the unique type code number. This example shows how we can use the sewn feature for a medium-sized palletizing machine. In zone one, which is shown in yellow, we have four emergency stops in series, a safety gate for maintenance and manual loading, a light curtain separating zone one from zone two, and a light curtain with an integrated muting function on the outfeed. Zone two, shown here in grey, as a light curtain for the pallet infeed. On the output side, a relay is required in zone one and in zone two, a semiconductor output with an off delay time of two seconds is required. You can also see in zone one, the OR logic function has been selected for the light curtain and safety gate. As before, the MyPNOT creator generates the logic, the module sequence and the unique type code number. The last application, an example of a large modular packaging plant. Zone one and two is a copy of the example on the previous slide with the addition of a zone three and a zone four. With the fear of repeating myself, I'm not going to go into detail on this slide as I think the message is clear. 
As before, the MyPNOTS creator generates the logic, the module sequence, and the unique type code number. And I just want to reiterate again at this point that there is no software controlling this application. Okay, the next couple of slides lists all of the parts potentially found in a MyPNOTS solution. This slide lists the head module, the four input modules, and four output modules. It shows a brief description, the module type, and the features, with the last column listing the part numbers. Because the MyPNOTS Creator tool automatically selects which module is required based on what your individual requirements are, I'm not going to go through these in detail, but I will look, as mentioned, at a few uh, in a second or two. On this slide, we see the four input-output module variants and the spare terminal options and spare bus connectors, should you lose or need to replace any. So, on to looking at some of the modules in brief. The head module, PNOTS YH1, supplies a 24 volt DC supply for up to the maximum of eight expansion modules. It has the integrated high level safety function, i.e., the global emergency stop, which is end linked to all other safe input functions. It has test pulse outputs for the entire module assembly a start input for the integrated safety function, and this is also present on all the input and input output modules. Rotary switches, or if you prefer potentiometers for your parameter settings, and diagnostic LEDs for each input on the module and the assembly as a whole. Also present on the head module is one not safety related semiconductor output, for sending a signal, for example, to a PLC or a panel lamp. The next module is the PNOTS YI1 for DI input module. This has four digital inputs for the monitoring up to two safe input functions. The input functions are AND linked to each other, as well as the higher level safety function of the head module. We have two rotary switches. And as you will find across all the 12 expansion modules, there are LED diagnostics for each individual input, output, and for the module itself. Here we are looking at the PNOTS YI2 for DI module. Again, this has four digital inputs for the monitoring up to two safe input functions. But with this module, the input functions are all linked, as well as being and linked to the global emergency stop function of the head module. And as you can see, the ever-present LEDs and rotary switches. This is the type 3A two-handed controller module PNOTS YI32DIT3A. It has four digital inputs for two handed monitoring in accordance with the EN574 standard, as well as a two channel safe input function. Input functions are AND linked to each other together with the global emergency stop function. This is the Type 3C two-handed controller module, PNOTS YI4 2DI T3C. The only difference between this and the previous module is it has six digital inputs for two-handed monitoring. Everything else remains exactly the same. So moving on to the output side, <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the PNOTS output module Y01 
2SO. It has two parallel direct switching semiconductor outputs with an independent voltage supply of up to six amps. Feedback loop inputs and the one not safety related signal output are common across all the MyPNOT output and input output modules. And again, we have the ever present diagnostic LEDs. The next module is the PNOT Y023NO output module. It has one relay output with three normally open contacts with the common features of feedback loop and signal output as previously stated. I just want to again mention that because the My PNOTS Creator tool automatically selects the modules, I don't want to waste time going into great detail on these. However, if you do need more information, it can be found via the creator tool itself or directly at the pills.com website. The module Y03 is the same as module Y01, which we saw two slides ago, but with the exception of having one of the two available semiconductor outputs with a selectable time delay. All other features would be the same as before. All of the MyPNOTS time delay modules have a selectable time off delay of between 0.05 and 300 seconds, whilst the time on delay is selectable between 0.25 and 180 seconds. Similar to the previous slide, the only difference being the Y04 output module has a relay time delay function and everything else remains the same as before. And lastly, looking at one of the four input output modules, YIO4, 2DI, 3NOT, this particular module encompasses all the previous specifications mentioned for both the relay input module and output module, including a time delay function. And the final slide before I open the MyPNOT Creator tool, uh, here is an image showing some of the PILT safety sensors that can be connected to the MyPNOT modular safety relay, as well as other manufacturer sensors. I would also like to add at this point that MyPNOT modules are currently in stock in the UK, some on a limited availability. Okay, so opening up the, uh, the mypeanuts.com website, this is the page that you'll be presented with. There's uh, some more information on the mypeanuts uh, modular system. What we're looking for is this tab here to start the mypeanuts creator. The first image you'll see is this one here, which will see and ask if you have a previous configuration that you'd like to use. Uh, I do have one, so I'm going to quickly highlight it and import it. Uh, it's asking me if there's been any changes made previously. I'm going to select no, uh, and here you go. So straight away, we have a MyPNOT modular system. And just to show the, the logic, configuration for this hardware. Uh, that's uh, the, the logic for it. So um, what we're going to do is actually reset the configuration and, and show you from, from scratch. So this is what you'll you'll see when you enter the My Creator tool. Um, just to navigate a, a bit here, we've got um, the top left here, it's saying that action is required. And we have this this traffic light color scheme here. So green is, is good, amber and red uh, need action. Um, we can click here and it will give us a quick help menu to tell us what it is that we need to do and also a remedy uh, down the bottom. So what it's asking us is to add an input and also to define the, uh, uh, 
the global e-stop function. And as you see, we get a, a brief paragraph, brief description of what that is uh, about. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the start type and the test pulse. So on this, I'm going to choose a rising and falling edge uh, with test pulse. Uh, here I can give it a, a, a label. So I'm just going to say uh, e-stop one, and then in a description, I'll just put global one just to keep it simple and then i'll click away from that and now you see that this has turned green but we do have what they call an invalid zone so it still needs some action and that is we need to select uh, an output some description so you can select that it gives us an option of relay or semiconductor output i'm going to choose relay and on this occasion i'm going to give it no uh, delay feature again i'm going to label it as uh, out one just for simplicity and relay one and there we go so it's now saying we have a uh, valid logic um, but we want to add a few more uh, inputs and outputs to that i can actually click on this box here and name the zone i'm going to call it tony one and i can give it a, a, a description i'm just going to say zone one just to give you an idea so let's add a few more inputs and outputs so we click on the input we get a selection down here so i'm going to choose a light curtain with a uh, startup test um, lc1 and just call it light one and click away from it so there we see the light curtain Let's add one more input here. Uh, let's say uh, safety gate with a rising falling edge, test pulses. I won't go through uh, any more equipment identifying and description. I think you get, you get the idea. Um, and there we see it's showing we've got a safety gate with a rising falling edge. I'm going to choose another output. Uh, and on this occasion, I'm going to choose a semiconductor output with an off delay, which is indicated by a little red tab. Um, we can select a delay time of up to 300 seconds. I'm going to choose uh, six seconds. So our eyes have a chance to look around the logic and see what's actually performing. And there we go. So we've got zone one that's pretty, pretty set up there. Um, I'm just going to add another zone by clicking here. It's going to convert to the hardware, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And you can see the global emergency stop function has been uh, uh, duplicated here in zone two. I'll click on that and I'll just call it Tony two. Click away and we'll just add uh, an input and an output here. So let's select, um, let's go for the all connection. Uh, and I need to define what we have. So I'm going to go for safety gate, uh, rising falling edge, and test pulses. And again, just to keep it simple, safety gate and a rising falling edge. So there we go. Uh, and just add one uh, output. Again, we'll go for relay output and we'll go for on delay. On delay, as you can see, is indicated by the blue tab. And you can select between 0 and 180 seconds. Again, we're going to go for six seconds so you can see um, uh, what's going on with regards to the logic. So um, what we'll do now, I'll just show you quickly uh, a simulation by clicking the play simulation button at the top. Okay, so it's asking us for a startup test, which is required. It's highlighted in blue, so we need to click that. And there we go. So we're all green, so everything is good. So we'll just hit the global emergency button and we see the off timer. Clicking down and there we have it. Um, and just to reset. like that and then the on timer will time up and that's it we're good to go there so the or function uh, 
Okay, that's good. And then we'll just reset that. Okay, so to look at the, the hardware, we'll just stop that simulation now. Um, what we do, we go to the bottom here and there's an arrow. So we could click on that and that will show us the modules that have been automatically selected. And then we click in this box called Open Hardware Configuration. And here you can see all the model, uh, modules that have been used. We can select a module. We can find out some more detail about it by clicking the information button and there you see a bit more detail and then if you click on the more information button that will take you to the website on this page we can view the potentiometer configuration as you see there we can also delete modules we can change the sequence we can replace them in certain new modules and so forth this also gives us a wiring diagram, a switch off matrix, and the order summary. And on this page, we can just name it um, install for ABC Limited. So on this page, you can see that it defers to a uh, spring loaded terminal type you have the options of screw terminal uh, and none if you're looking to keep spares on the shelf it gives you the, the dimensions the overall dimensions a bill of materials down the right hand side and there's the unique type code number and then here we have an opportunity to, to export we can export the url the type code number, and we can save it to disk for ePlayer. Also, what we can do is click on Create PDF. And I'll just open that. And then what this gives you is the potentiometer layout, the uh, overall dimensions. It says there that it's an install for ABC Limited. There's the type code number, bill of materials, QR code will take you to the website, the uh, legend and the uh, paragraph on the global safety function. There's the logic that we created. It generates the wiring diagram, the equipment identifier list, the switch off matrix, and then we have a, a page of uh, global support numbers. So that's pretty much the, the My Creator tool. Um, like I said, it's very easy, very quick. Um, and what we'll do now, we'll just go back to the uh, presentation. And just by way of uh, recap, I just want to play a short video of some two and a half minutes. Uh, this will recap what we've gone through today. And this will also gives us further opportunity for uh, any, more, any more questions. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so um, just uh, wrapping up now, um, as we uh, usually do, Pilch are running a number of webinars through the course of this year, so please do join us on future webinars. They are all free to participate and can be found at the web address at the top of this slide. My colleague Jason Reed will be hosting our next webinar, which looks at safety first for warehouse automation, and this is on the 25th of March. That concludes our webinar for today. I hope it was useful for you. And if you would like to discuss an opportunity or require further information, please do not hesitate to contact us or your PILT supplier. It just leaves me to say thank you for your time and I hope you have a good weekend. I will uh, leave the webinar open for a couple of minutes just to uh, field any more uh, questions. But for now, thank you very much and goodbye.